We are making creme brulee today. I'm really hoping I didn't screw this up. Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. If you guys are new here, my name is Emily. Welcome to my little motherhood channel where I take care of all things mom. In today's video, I decided to just try something new and do something fun for myself and I've made some creme brulee. It doesn't have the topping on it yet, and I don't know, I'm a, it kind of looks like maybe I undercooked it. This was a thing on my bucket list for sure, and definitely an experience today, this afternoon, and as I was trying to follow the directions online and go ahead and make this. But I figured that if I could master this, then that would make for a very fancy dessert that I could show off sometime when I host people at my new house. So, you know, it's worth a shot. I actually made a half batch, which means I only have two of these little containers already done. And, you know, I'm if I screw it up, then I can always try it again with the other half batch and I didn't waste like a whole bunch of ingredients. So before we do the sugar coating on top, let me go ahead and show you guys the recipe that I did and followed and we'll taste test this later and see if it's even worth doing in the first place. So for this recipe, I used a cup of heavy whipping cream, two egg yolks, a quarter cup of sugar, and a teaspoon of vanilla. You're also going to need some ramekins. I had two Pyrex containers and it ended up working out okay for me. You're also going to need a baking dish. So start by preheating your oven to 325 and then go ahead and separate your egg whites from your egg yolks. I used my egg whites to make some banana bread later on and if you just want an egg white omelet you could use that there. But with the egg yolks you're going to add in the sugar and you're going to beat it until it is light and fluffy. So it's definitely a color change here. I scraped on the sides and gave it another beating just to make sure that everything was nicely incorporated. After you mix the egg yolks with the sugar, you're going to go ahead and heat your heavy whipping cream in a little saucepan over some medium heat. And I waited until it started like simmering on the sides and just got really warm. We don't want it to get like overly hot based on my understanding. So after it like simmered and bubbled on the edges, I went ahead and I turned off the heat. And then it was time to add my vanilla extract. Apparently, you can most of the time use a vanilla bean and you add that in and like at the beginning but I wanted to do something really simple. And as you'll see later on, I was happy with using the vanilla extract, the flavor that I gave it. But if you're doing the vanilla extract, you wanna do that after you turn off the heat for the heavy whipping cream mixture. Then we're gonna go ahead and add in about a quarter of this heavy whipping cream mixture with the vanilla into the egg yolk and sugar mixture and mix that up. It's so that with the eggs don't like cook by like exposing them to extreme heat. And then we add the now, you know, egg and heavy whipping cream mixture back to the heavy whipping cream and just mix it all together and pour it into the ramekins. Now, this looks nice and creamy. It looks based on like what I've seen on YouTube. So far, so good. <laughs> So once they're in the ramekins, I went ahead and boiled some water using this little electric um, kettle and poured the water about halfway up the glass sides of the ramekins in my baking dish. Next, we're going to throw this in the oven that was preheated to 325. Now, some people pour the water in the container like when it's in the oven just to avoid some splashing, but this ended up working out for me. After it is in the oven, as you can see, I did a little time lapse and it looked like the tops were done um, based on the things that I've seen online. It said, you know, wait until the top looks just a bit just done and then take it out. So this was at 30 minutes and it was a little jiggly, which I was a little concerned about. And so I, my cousin was over with his wife and his wife has a friend who has baked these before and she suggested touching the tops with a spoon to see if it sticks. Well, it did and that would mean that it's not quite done. So I had put one of these in the fridge. So then I had to take it back, put it back in 
And then I checked it at 35 minutes, it was still jiggly. And at 40 minutes, I checked it with a spoon, as you guys can see here, and it did not stick. So I was happy about that. And I was like, okay, I guess, I guess we're done here. So I took out the little creme brulees, uh, or maybe it's just creme at this point. I don't know exactly what the brulee actually means. But as you can see, it's still a little jiggly. I was a little concerned about that. But uh, one of the other instructions that I saw online was to put it in like a water bath just to kind of cool down. So I put some ice. There was a risk of it cracking, but my containers were fine. And then once it cooled down to like room temperature, I covered my little Pyrex containers and threw them in the fridge for about three to four hours. And some suggest to leave it in the fridge overnight. Maybe I'd have different results if I did it that way. Okay, so as you guys saw, it was definitely a struggle to figure out how to get it to be like this. I have no idea. It looks a little bit jiggly. I don't know if you guys can see it. it looks a little jiggly. It looks like if I tilt it, it's a little bit more liquidy than I'd like. But taking the advice of my cousin's wife's friend, uh, I did, you know, touch it with a spoon and it didn't stick. Now it looks like it's sticking. So. I don't know, maybe I screwed this up, but whatever. I'm still gonna eat it because I'm, you know, it's it's been cooked. It can't be that bad for me, aside from being unhealthy. But anyways, let's go ahead and top this with sugar and use my new kitchen torch to go ahead and give it that nice caramelization. So I'd like to thank ReIdea for sponsoring this portion of today's video. They sent me this really cool kitchen torch it's nice and small. It's like easy and comfortable to hold in your hand. It has a nice locking feature so that, you know, you're not just going to randomly light something on fire. And you have a little like area where you can see how much fuel you have left. This little end piece of the lighter is where you would refill the fuel and you can adjust the flame. So Juan went ahead and got this fuel from Walmart. You just press it in the hole on the bottom of the little torch and hold it down until the fuel gets you know enough in there for you to complete your torching project. Using this torch in today's video, as you guys will see, it is really easy to use, comfortable in my hand, and really did a great job at making my creme brulees. So again, I'd like to thank ReIdea for sponsoring this portion of today's video, and I'm super excited to make some more projects using this cool kitchen gadget. So I'm gonna use a little half tablespoon here of sugar, and I'm gonna sprinkle it on top of my little custard. Give it a nice coating. I really hope I didn't screw this up big time. The fact that it's so jiggly makes me a little nervous. I don't think it's supposed to be this jiggly. And I really hope I don't get sick. I really doubt it. I, I have a feeling that it'll be, you know, good enough. All right, here we go. Uh, I'm gonna do the other one close up so you guys can see it like up close, but got my handy little torch. This actually isn't that expensive and uh, looks like on, on Amazon, you actually have to buy your own fuel which was really easy to refill. So I'm gonna go ahead and unlock this thing and ah, give it a go. So it's looking like the little crystals are like liquefying, which is cool. Not seeing that like, oh, there we go, the caramelization. So something like this little torch would be great for meringues, if you wanna do creme brulee, if you want to torch marshmallows, uh, like s'mores or something. I was gonna, I was considering doing a, um, like a s'mores cookie where I then like toast the, the marshmallow on top of the cookie, but I decided to give this a try since it was kind of on my bucket list and something I've wanted to do for a really long time. The other thing worth mentioning is uh, Juan bought the fuel at Walmart and it was only like he said, like two bucks and it was like behind the counter, like maybe where the cigarettes are or something like that. So you're gonna have to ask them to unlock it. So you're not like roaming around the store wondering where to get the fuel. You actually have to get it from like behind the counter and stuff. So I have no idea if I put enough sugar on this thing. It doesn't seem like a lot, 
maybe I needed to do like a really, really, really thick coating. But we're gonna give this a try. It says to let it sit in the fridge for about 30 minutes to kind of like firm up. So maybe that's why it doesn't seem like, you know, the, the typical creme brulee top. But I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the fridge to firm up and then I will check back in with my little taste test. Okay, it has been about 40 minutes since I threw this in the fridge after like toasting the top. It is very firm. I'm really hoping I didn't screw this up. Here we go on my taste test. probably undercooked. It is like a little bit runny. But it does taste really good. So it's definitely not like a flan texture or like as solid as it probably should be. But it tastes delicious. And I really like the crunch that torching the sugar on top obviously brings it. I think one of my biggest mistakes was taking it out, thinking it was done, putting it in the fridge, then immediately taking it back out again, throwing it back in the oven. I think if I were to have just left it in the oven for the full 40 minutes, it would probably be like perfect and fine, but I'm happy with the flavor. So I'm, I'm gonna eat all of this for sure. The caramelization on top is just delicious and I'm excited to try this again in the future and I'll probably take you guys along in another video. So stay tuned for part two where I hopefully master this even more. But like I said, the flavor is there and I didn't even use like a vanilla bean. So I'm not that disappointed. But that is the end of today's video. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. If you liked it, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. That really helps me out. And if you are new here, I would love for you to stick around and subscribe and check out all that my channel has to offer. Again, I'd like to thank Radia for sponsoring this video today and sending me the awesome little kitchen torch. I'm excited to make more creme brulees and hopefully master them, but also make things like meringues. And like I mentioned before, my little s'mores cookie idea, I definitely want to give that a try too. So stick around and I will probably do that in a future video as well, but I'm dying to try some more of this. So I will catch you guys in the next one. End of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.